In this video, we'll go through how to build out this animated hero section all within Figma. We'll be using native Figma prototyping as well as the awesome free plugin provided by Lottie. So by the end of this video, if you've had hero sections before and you wanna add some animation or micro interactions to them, you'll have the understanding of how to do that. Let's get into the tutorial. So the way that I build animations in Figma using native prototyping and a little bit of Lottie, we'll cover the Lottie later in the video, but first off, we'll go through the native prototyping and how that works. The best workflow that I found is that kind of actually work backwards. You get your finalized design first and you make sure that you're happy with where all the parts are gonna end up at the end of the animation and then you work backwards from there kind of similar to if you've done animation in flash or after effects or something like that the way that i was kind of taught is that you know where the animation is going to land at the end so for example we know that all these parts are going to end up here now that we know that this is the end spot where is going to be the starting spot to get to here and then you can start sequencing it out that way and once that you kind of understand that workflow i find it much easier to sequence it out it'll eventually look something like this where you've sequenced out all the elements and it starts off blank and then everything animates in slowly. So let's work through that together of how we do that. So I know that I want the words to animate in first and then these parts to animate in and then maybe some of the light things last. So with what we were just saying, if we know we want these to do first, we actually will do these ones first because we want these two ones to be last. It's important when you do this that your layers are named. Controversial topic in Figma about naming layers but the reason that I like to have the layers named is because for the smart animate to work properly in Figma, it needs to make sure that it has the same name across frames. So I just find it easier when I'm looking for different elements that you name the layers. The rest of the time you're doing designs, feel free. Have frame 4000, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Now we can start sequencing it out. So hold option and drag another frame, make a copy of it. We know that we want these elements to actually appear last. Because we want this one to appear last, we'll come in here and we'll make this down to zero. And then we'll drag another frame. One down, we want this returns one to appear. So plus 50. I find this is a good way to be consistent instead of just dragging it. If you use the Y panel and you just add the numerical value in there, then you know that everything else, if you do a plus 50, that they'll all be the same. So we want these to slide up as they appear on the screen. So we wanna send it downwards and we also want to change it from 100 to zero. Next with revenue. And next with this graph. So we can prototype this up quickly make sure that we're getting the desired effect we want. Change it to smart animate in here, set it's after delay. You can finesse this as you go once you get a feel of it. I just like to start at some sort of average numbers to see how it's feeling. All right, if we select the first one now, and we click present. There's some funkiness going on right now. That was happening because I hadn't named what this download button was. So if, what I was saying is important to name your layers because if you have two items that are the same, so if you have these two rectangles here that are both rectangle seven, when I'm animating them between frames, you can get confused which one's rectangle seven. It might try to do both of them or it might just choose a random one. That's why it's important to make sure that they have unique names at least. Now we can see that it is animating and these are appearing slowly in the order that we set it up to be. So if we keep working that workflow now, we're on the next thing to be this button, the so plus 50, set it to zero. And now I want this orb to disappear as well. So set it to zero. Just the nav bar. Maybe the nav bar can actually go at the end. So to do that, because we've set everything up with the same names, we can select it all. and set it, set the layer to zero. Now, same as before, we want to click prototype and we're going to drag the frames to the right place. First one, we'll make it on click so we can trigger the animation. Smart animate 450. And then after that, we'll change them all to after delay. Figma is pretty good if you start setting it at the same spot 
like we were before, we'll, so we'll send them all to after delay of 250 to animate for 450, it'll automatically do it. You also need to make sure that you drag the starting point to where the new starting point is now. So it's actually up here. So if we go through and we preview that again, so click to start the animation and everything's animating as we wanted it to. So now the second part of how do I get these animations to keep spinning like this and keep on this rotation? So actually these were made all within Figma actually. I didn't make them in After Effects like I used to. So they're made all through Figma and they're just using the Lottie plugin. So I'll just take you through the workflow of how I made these. So here's the actual designed version of the graph in Figma. As you can see, this is all just Figma elements at the moment. It's just shapes and vectors. So same as before, we're just making a simple animation as we go. So I want this graph to go downwards to start with. And then I want it to go back up. And then I want it to loop. So just very simple animation. So drag a handle, make these ones after one millisecond. So it starts straight away. Might make it a bit slower, might make it 700. Pull another one down. After delay, once. 700 milliseconds to get from here to here and then pull it back up to the top so then we have a loop now if we preview that quickly we can see how that happens so before this is where it get a bit confusing because i would want to have nested animations within another animation but it's really simple now to just go over to plugins search for lottie this is a free plugin i think there is a paid subscription on their website but everything i'm doing here is free so you just got to log in via browser or just sign up for an account once you log in or make an account then you just jump back into figma and now you have a few options in here but we just want to export to lottie at the moment so what you want to do is you want to select where your animation starts so this workflow number four which is my free name this graph micro animation we select the starting point Select export to Lottie, and then you can see how it works. So just one small tip with it. Everything has to be on a frame. And because I want this one to have this kind of glassy background when it goes over the top, I actually made sure that I rounded the frame's background so that it matched so that it matched the radius of the shape. So it's actually a rounded frame. Because I was finding it difficult with that glass effect to have a nice background for it, so this was easier. So export to Lottie, and then we can see how it's working. And we don't want a background, we want to make sure that it's on transparent grid. And you can save it to your workflow, or you can just insert it as a GIF. So this will convert to a GIF for a little bit. Once that's finished, you can have the option of saving it to your workspace. You don't have to save it to your workspace, it's just easier later on if you want to use it again somewhere, or if you delete it in Figma by accident, then it is in your workspace. So it's a bit confusing sometimes because it kind of places in random spots, but because I had this frame selected, it's actually placed within this frame right now. So we drag it out. And then if we put that on just a new frame to test it, and we open that up, we can see the animation that we made, but instead of getting it all messy, if we had to use this prototype version to put this micro animation in, we can just create a GIF out of it really quickly and then place that into our design. This also would be easier uh, if you wanted to export these and put them in, say, Webflow, for example. If you wanted to build this, this would actually work quite easy to make these kind of micro animations on loop and then export them and put them something in Webflow. And that would work straight away as well. And then you just place this in your design and then it just runs on a loop now. And the same with this revenue one. I'll just show you how I made that. So to achieve the looping interaction I have here, I made a whole video about this, but to go through it quickly, you want to have your numbers or letters here wrapped in a frame that has clip content on. Then you want to select the numbers within it, Command C, and make two copies of it. So now you have three of it. Select the other two, or select two of them, rotate them a little bit, and then drag them below so they're out of the frame. So they're below now. Now change the numbers on them to what I had before. Command Y so you can see see-through, makes it easier. Now that you have now that you have your other number selected, 
grab your frame, hold option, make two copies of it. So the first frame, we have 46. Now in the second one, we want the 46 to go above. So select that and drag it above it, out of the frame. And then select the second number that you want to come through. So the 62. You want to drag this up and then center it in the middle of that frame. Unrotate it and make it 100%. One thing you want to do as well, um, and unrotate it. And then the next one, it's easier just to make another copy of this one. So then drag that one down. Now drag the 62 up to where the 42 is, up to where the 40 is. And now select your third number, your 75. Unrotate that and then center that within the middle of your frame. Connect it up with prototyping after one millisecond. You can play around with these numbers to see what feels right to you. And loop the last one back to the first one. Now if we preview that, one issue we have here is you can see the 62 as the numbers go back down. So to fix that so it seems more like a seamless loop, we're actually going to select the 62 here and we're going to make that 0% so that when it goes back down to reach the position here, you won't see it because it will be at 0%. Now to make it more consistent so that they all look like they fade in, we're just going to repeat the process. So we're going to make this one we're going to make the 75 here 0, and then we're going to make the 42 0, make the 62 0, make the 62 0 here as well. So now it's more a perfect loop as they fade in and then they fade back out. Now that we've made that, same process as before, open plugins, open the Lottie plugin, export to Lottie, and insert as a GIF. Insert GIF, now you just have to wait for it to get to 100%. Now that's finished, you can save it if you want. You can drag your new GIFs that you've made into the bottom of the animation that we had here before to create the second part of the animation. And that's how you create the second part of the animation. So the loading part is just using native prototyping and smart animate. And then the second part to make these widget things that work on repeat as GIFs, you're just using the free Lottie plugin within Figma. I made this one a little bit different the second time that I made it. I just like the fade in a bit. It feels a bit smoother compared to the first one that I had it as. Thanks so much for watching. Check out another video here.